Today, I want to talk about preoperative evaluations. This is something that you should do on every patient you put to sleep, even if you're at a facility where it is the MD's legal responsibility to pre-op the patient. If you are the one managing your patient during the case, and you are the one handling their airway, then you should evaluate your patient before surgery. Here I have a pre-op form I typed up that hits the highlights of your assessment. Different facilities have different forms that look differently from this, but they all hit the same points. The reason for this video is because I think it is important to develop a consistent way of pre oping your patient despite the facility you are at. I've noticed while working with students that they know the kind of questions to ask, but they're not quite sure the flow or the order to ask them in that would be most efficient, especially when they move from facility to facility and encounter different pre-op layouts. So your eval should be used as a guide for the type of anesthetic that would be best for your patient. For example, there are some surgeries that allow for the use of an LMA. Decide if that is appropriate for your patient after you talk to them, not before. This may seem like common sense, but I've repeatedly had students tell me that they're going to intubate and paralyze a patient for a case that could be a MAC or an LMA before they ever spoke with the patient. Just to be clear, I'm not criticizing students. I love being with students, and I understand this is part of the learning process. I am just explaining what prompted me to make this video. So let's go through this pre-op eval as if I was pre-oping an actual patient. So first thing, I like to introduce myself to the patient and let them know I'm a CRNA and I'll be a member of their anesthesia team today. I ask them what procedure they are having done and who the surgeon is that will be performing this procedure. I then ask if they have any drug allergies, any that make their airway swell up. I ask what medications they took this morning or last night, and if they've ever had any problems with the anesthesia in the past. Some patients will say no, but they've never had anesthesia in the past. So then I will ask if their family members have ever had any trouble with the anesthesia in the past. I ask them if it is okay to receive blood in the case of emergency. I ask them if they smoke or vape, if they use alcohol or drugs, and then I explain the reason for why I'm asking these questions, such as a reactive airway, and that they may require more anesthesia. Then I go into their medical history. I ask them if they've ever had any heart problems, funky rhythms of the heart, problems with the valves in the heart, heart procedures, heart attacks. If they say yes, I ask them, do they have a cardiologist that follows them? If they say yes, I will ask them, when is the last time they have seen this cardiologist? If they say greater than a year, then I will inquire further about that. But you, typically, you would want your patient to have seen their cardiologist within the last year. If the patient has a rhythm of the heart that requires a blood thinner, such as atrial fibrillation, I will ask them, when is the last time they took that blood thinner? I usually move on to the lungs. I will ask them if they've had any shortness of breath, any asthma, emphysema, or COPD, sleep apnea, do they snore really loudly at night, and usually if the spouse is there, I will wait for their answer as well. Ask if they have any high blood pressure, high cholesterol that they take medicines for. If they say yes, I ask what kind of medicine it is. I ask if they have any reflux or heartburn. If they say yes, I will ask them if it is well controlled. Is it associated with certain foods? Do they wake up with a funny taste in their mouth sometimes at night? Then ask if they have any infectious disease, any problems with the liver, the kidneys, or the bladder. Diabetes. Is it well controlled? Where does their blood glucose usually run? What medications they take for their diabetes, if they take any? Any kind of thyroid issues, seizures, strokes, or mini strokes, bleeding or clotting issues, or cancers, any kind of psychiatric disorders such as anxiety or depression, arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis should be something you are concerned about with your DLing. If they look like a difficult DL, you might want to use a CMAC or a GlideScope because of the possibility of Atlanta axial subluxation. It's a common airway complication of rheumatoid arthritis. It's usually due to the weakening of the transverse axial ligament, and it can put the, the patient at risk for quadriparesis or paralysis. Once I've gone through the patient's medical history, I go ahead and evaluate their lung sounds, their heart sounds, ask them if they have any kind of extremity weakness, lower upper extremities, if they have any kind of musculoskeletal degeneration or disorders. I go ahead and assess their airway, ask them to open up their mouth really, really wide, ask them if they have any loose, chipped, or removable teeth. I also ask them to stick out their tongue. I know that is not a part of the mal potty assessment, but it lets me know how large their tongue is respective to their oral cavity. 
Then I ask them to close their mouth and lift their chin up to the ceiling. Do they have any difficulty moving their neck up and down or side to side? Do they feel any kind of tingling sensation in their hands if they have had a cervical fusion or if they have some cervical instability? Typically, if they have any kind of cervical involvement, you want to use a CMAC or a GlideScope just to be on the safe side. I ask them if their teeth are loose, chipped, or removable, any dentures, partials, any caps or implants that I need to be aware of, and I make note if they have poor dentition, if they have chipped or loose teeth, where those teeth are at. Once I've asked my patient all the questions I have to ask them to get to know them, I go ahead and go over my anesthetic plan. If it is a general anesthetic, I tell them I'm going to give them some medication back here to help them relax, take them over to the OR, have them move over in the OR bed, hook them up to all the monitors, put an oxygen mask on their face, and ask them to take some big, deep breaths all the way down to their lung bases. Once they do that, we will put them to sleep. Once they're all the way asleep, we will put a breathing tube or a breathing device in. They won't remember going in or out, but they might have a little bit of a sore throat. The surgeon will do the procedure. Once the surgeon is done, we will take that device or tube out, wake them up, and take them to recovery. I go over the risks of anesthesia, the most common ones, such as a corneal abrasion, a chipped tooth, or a clipped lip. Since the face is the area that we generally work in, that is the area of highest risk. I explain them what causes the risks for corneal abrasion, such as them waking up and rubbing their eyes and having the pulse socks on their index finger. I typically try to put my pulse ox on their middle finger to kind of avoid or help lower the risk of a corneal abrasion. In my mind, it helps lower the risk. I tell them there's an increased possibility of postoperative nausea and vomiting, that we do give them some medications to help mitigate that, but that is a possibility. If I tell them the plan is an LMA device, I make it clear that during the case, if for some reason they are not breathing adequately or if I need to secure the airway, that they may receive an ET tube. That is not the primary plan at this time, but it is plan B. If the MAC anesthetic is the chosen aesthetic, then I will go over that anesthetic plan. I will tell them that I will, again, give them some medication to help them relax back here. We will get them back to the OR. We will hook them up to all the monitors, put an oxygen mask on their face, like a nasal cannula or a face mask, and then they will drift off to sleep. Let them know that it is a similar anesthetic to an EGD or colonoscopy if they ever had one. So there's a possibility they might wake up and remember some things. People usually don't, but since there's a possibility, I have to let them know. This is not the same as awareness during a general anesthetic. And I make sure that they are clear on this and understand this. If I plan on putting a second IV in on our arterial line while the patient is asleep, I will go over this with them. I will let them know that once they're asleep, we might start a second IV or an arterial line that helps us watch their blood pressure more closely. They will be asleep. They will not remember it. They just might wake up with some new accessories. And typically patients are okay with this. Once I'm done with my whole spiel, I ask them what questions they have for me. I make sure to ask what questions you have for me and not do you have any questions for me because I've read that this will result in a higher likelihood of patients asking questions. I make sure to go through their chart and to note any labs of concern such as their H&H, platelets, albumin level, potassium, BUN, creatinine, and if there's any type and screen or type and cross in the system especially if there's a high likelihood to have significant EBL. So I hope you found this general run through through a pre-op assessment helpful. The most important thing is to keep it consistent. Pre-op every patient the same way. And what I mean by that is in the same order. You hit the same questions in the same order. That way, when a patient diverts you by telling you a long story about a stroke they had 20 years ago that they don't have any deficits from, you kind of know where in your assessment you're supposed to be. And if you want to bring this pre-op list with you because the facility you are at right now does computer charting and you want to stay consistent, I don't see a problem with that. Just check with your preceptor and make sure that they're okay with it. So hopefully this form will help you develop some level of consistency in the way you will pre-op a patient. All right, that's it. I hope you have a wonderful day.